Good morning, it's Kurt from Simcoe Plastics coming to you from the Simcoe Plastics sales office at Office Inc. in Barrie, Ontario, Canada. Uh, before I get started, I really want to thank you for the comments and positive feedback from last week's video uh, pertaining to the recycling of fiberglass boat hulls. I think this is going to be a very significant project and we can certainly divert potentially hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousand pounds uh, from landfill while finding um, a useful purpose for, uh, for the, the byproduct of the hulls. Um, so I will definitely keep you posted on what's going on with that. So today's topic, I want to talk about why plastics have to be cleaned prior to going to recycling. So when uh, plastics are put in the blue bin, your municipal blue bin, and they're, uh, they're sold to the companies that actually do the reprocessing, um, many of them do have wash lines and can do some rudimentary washing. But if you think about things like um, peanut butter and peanut butter jars, <coughs> excuse me, that's gonna be very difficult to get out of these washing lines. And those particular items with food or other contaminants that can't be removed get diverted and they still go to landfill. Um, so if you could just take a few minutes and clean up the plastic before it goes in the blue box and if there are paper labels even if you can remove those because that makes it very difficult to uh, to properly recycle that certainly helps our friends a few steps down the stream um, with uh, with their job and ensuring that we can have good re good clean reprocessed material to go back into industry uh, another interesting area of plastics recycling that hasn't been touched primarily because of the stigma of a cleanliness issue is waste coming from hospitals and this is a project that I'm starting to dig my uh, my heels into um, because there are um, so many pieces of plastic that are perfectly clean that are still going to landfill that shouldn't. Um, so in that kind of setting, um, hospital waste that has had patient contact where it becomes a biohazard, we, we can't do anything with that in terms of recycling. I could see that being a component of plastics to fuel conversion technology, um, which is something else I'll do a video on um, a little bit later. Um, but there are so many aspects of um, plastic that go into hospitals for things like, oh, I don't know, uh, um, uh, sterilized water bottles sterilized water used to irrigate wounds. It's a glorified water bottle and it's not being recycled because of the stigma associated with it coming from the hospital. I'm working with a hospital in central Ontario and they've actually developed a fantastic protocol for handling uh, recyclable plastics. And because of their work, I can now work with a recycler who is going to be willing to take a fair amount of their product. And there's another element to that too, which I'll talk about in a, in a coming up video, uh, upcoming video, uh, with another large area of waste that can be reprocessed very efficiently, never touches a patient, so there's no human contact, no bio waste, um, biohazard, and we can get really high quality reprocessed material from it, which could be used to mold things to go right back into the hospital. So. Um, lots of exciting things on that avenue of, uh, of um, recycling that uh, just isn't being addressed or not effectively at any rate. So I may be the first in Ontario to do it. I don't know, um, but I think I am. And uh, hopefully in the weeks and months ahead, there's going to be some exciting news to report on that particular project. So just to sum it up, um, clean plastics before they go to, uh, to the blue bins, just to keep the yields up. Um, on the reprocessing, re reprocessing side of things and uh, that really helps the, uh, the process along. So please do that. And uh, until next week, um, protect your playground, have fun, think recycling, think green. Thanks. Bye-bye.